We are so inspired by uh, tonight's presenters. We have uh, seven sessions. We publicize it. It's all published on our website uh, so that people like you can actually ask very simple questions like, is the beach that I'm going swimming on today a clean beach or a dirty beach or whatever? I should say Koh Phangan is actually the best example in the Thai Gulf for clean seawater. Uh, so, so we're on a good island here. Surprisingly, Koh Tao um, is much less clean. Uh, and that's probably due to the concentration of dwellings in certain areas around the island. Um, one of our key areas is education, um, in that the kids of today are the adults and the movers and shakers of tomorrow. So if we can engage with the, the children today, to um, particularly we teach edu edu environmental guardianship in all of the state schools on Koh Phangan, for example, some of the state schools on Koh Samui, and the only state school on Koh Palawai. Um, but we see this as a very important aspect of our work. And we also encourage uh, zero waste approaches to the schools. All of our workers are volunteers, so don't take a salary. We do a fabulous event, a, a walking tour. And I want you to tell everyone about that now. I think not much people think about the medical plan or plan growing around. Can you? for medical or youth for edible to eat, they doesn't know. Why I know it? Yeah, I'm now, um, sorry, I'm 40 years old now. And when I were young, were, were child, I seen something like it. I touched something like it. I see my grandfather, I see local, the youth, for me, it's all about our feelings. It's about people care, it's about earth care, it's about fair share. And there's 12 principles that teach us as designers to implement. So uh, these this 12 principles are basically about looking to nature, observing nature, and working harmony with it. So you don't go there, cut everything, and make it flat. You just look to the plantation, because some plants, that it, it are vines, they're going to climb in others. So you have trees, you can plant black pepper, you can plant passion fruit. If you have a little bit of uh, water running through your property, you can put a lot of plants that sucks a lot of water, bananas or even ginger, things that need moisture. Beach days, people can come, do beach days, help with the cleanup. Uh, people can buy trash hero bottles and that prevents them from uh, using more plastic bottles. Um, and people can also presumably ask not to have uh, plastic straws with their, their drinks in restaurants, yes. I work, I live here for a long time, so I just want to spend my free time to giving back to our beloved island, so, and uh, the beach to be clean. And Trash Hero is match me, so I just see Valerie, she just foreigner coming and she try to help. I'm Thai, so why not? I have to jump in, so I join her. Many bottles feel like never get squeezed, no scratch on the bottle. What can we do with it? In my part, which is, I think, different from Trash Hero those times, I think I want to do something with this bottle. We start the shop. We learn little by little until we start to fill something into the bottle by my hand that I made myself and I don't want to buy, I don't need to buy any expensive organic. If I can make everything that First thing, we grow non-chemicals in our place, in our shop. Everything that you use, it's clean. It's healthy from the beginning. Yeah, so this is, this is unpacked start from. So when you come here, change your mentality, you know, be part of the community and uh, support it in your behavior. You must go visit Unpack. Let's imagine that there are 100,000 of teams like Clean Pangan, Clean Pattaya, Clean Tel Aviv in the world right now. If we double the amount of teams every 10 months, only in six years it will be more than 10 million. It will be 13 million of eco-organizations. 
Uh, it means that we need to involve only 4% of the population to solve the problem of plastic trash. I have a responsibility to live as uh, uh, environmental conscious as I can. So what can I do? And the first thing, of course, was collecting rainwater. And the second one works quite well, solar-powered uh, energy. I had sort of 16 panels uh, uh, on my roof. So uh, I decided, um, well, I, put, I have to buy a, a battery. So that was actually, again, double amount the money. But now I was uh, not independent of the grid, but uh, I... Um, you know, I, I have my own electricity most of the time. Um, and uh, uh, is it worth it? Yes, definitely. It's not necessarily financially worth it, maybe in 10 years' time or so, but um, I, sl I, I definitely can recommend it uh, for your contribution into the environment. You go back to that original site of the mountain, that's what we love about this mountain, yeah. and we want to protect that as much as we can. This is what we wanted to avoid. Now, we're not like super eco-warriors. We're gonna build concrete houses in the, in the jungle, and that's not super environmental, but it's the best that we have. We're trying to find this right balance of being ecological. We're going to be 100% off-grid solar. It's kind of supporting our dream of being ecological. Any educational program is, is a long-term uh, thing, obviously. Uh, we actually have plan a 20-year plan for our educational program. Copangan is in a state of change in terms of its waste handling. I think they are changing in the right direction, but again, it's these small steps. There have been proposals and discussions with Tessabon um, about installing a, a clean incinerator plant, um, a waste-to-energy system that would also provide free electricity uh, to Copangan as well. That has hit a few problems, but um, is still under consideration. Warm thank you for all the hard work you're doing. Thanks all of you for coming too, for caring enough about the island to be here.